Mara Jade Skywalker was a Force-sensitive human female who was during different times in her life, an Emperor's Hand, a smuggler, and later a Jedi Master who sat upon the Jedi High Council. She was raised as a servant and assassin to Emperor Palpatine and became a high-level Force-using operative. As an Emperor's Hand, Jade carried out the Emperor's bidding, killing rebels and corrupt Imperials alike with cold professionalism, even as a young woman. As Palpatine's assassin, she received top-notch training from experts in a variety of fields, as well as training in the Force, which was continued by Luke Skywalker years later. After Palpatine's death, she received his last command, which was to kill Luke Skywalker. However, the death of her master caused her to go rogue. Eventually, she joined smuggler chief Talon Karda, becoming one of his best smugglers and his second in command. During the predations of Grand Admiral Thrawn, she was forced to work with Skywalker and developed a grudging respect for him. During the Galactic Civil War, Mara Jade proved herself skilled in a variety of fields. She was a good pilot and mechanic, and trained in the use of both a blaster and hand-to-hand -hand combat, even without relying on the Force. Over the years, she continued to work for Karda and interact with Skywalker intermittently, training at his Jedi Praxium on Yavin 4 for a short period of time. She was groomed by Karda to take over the Smuggler's Alliance and had a brief relationship with Lando Calrissian as part of that role, although she later admitted it was a raid. She also continued to grow closer to Skywalker and worked alongside him on numerous occasions, including the Almanian Uprising and the Corellian Crisis. The two finally realized in 19 ABY while on a mission to Nirawan that they were in love and wanted to spend the rest of their lives together. After marrying Skywalker, Mara Jade took the surname Skywalker and devoted her life to the new Jedi Order, becoming a master in her own right. Shortly before the Yuzhan Vong War, she fell ill due to deadly coon spores that she'd been infected with by a Yuzhan Vong agent. She used the Force to slow their progress, even as she continued to fight against the alien invaders on numerous battlefields, including Dantooine and Ithor. But the disease was only purged from her system after the birth of her son, Ben, in 26 AGY. After becoming a master, Jade Skywalker took her niece, Jaina Solo, as an apprentice until she reached knighthood. During that time, she participated in Jedi offensives against the Yuzhan Vong, aiding in the war effort. After the fall of Coruscant, she helped Cal Omas become elected as the Chief of State as the New Republic reorganized itself into the Galactic Federation of Free Alliances. Jade Skywalker ultimately saw her efforts against the Yuzhan Vong rewarded in the war's final battle on Coruscant with the death of Supreme Overlord Shimra Jaman. <laughs> You in the following years, Jade Skywalker was active during the Darkness Crisis and the subsequent Swarm War, wherein she helped to thwart the expansionist plans of Raynar Thule and the insectoid Killix, who were spreading into Chiss space and subverting many other people into becoming joiners under the influence of several Dark Jedi. Jade Skywalker was insistent that the Jedi who had joined Killick communities would be withdrawn, as they were using their skills in combat against the Chiss provoking them. She continued to serve by the side of her husband as a Jedi Master during the Second Galactic Civil War, first serving alongside the Galactic Alliance against the rebellious Confederation. The re-emergence of the Sith Lady Lumia was another threat that Jade Skywalker had to confront. But though she and her husband skirmished with both Lumia and the fallen Jedi Alima Rar on multiple occasions, the Dark Side had escaped. As the war escalated, Jade Skywalker was killed by her nephew, Jason Solo, whom she had learned was a Sith, and therefore saw as a threat to her family personally, to the Jedi Order, and to the galaxy at large. Mara Jade was born in 17 BBY during a time of great instability as Emperor Palpatine, alias the Sith Lord Darth Sidious, and his apprentice Darth Vader were eliminating the remnants of the Jedi Order. The Emperor took Jade from her parents and brought her to the planet Coruscant at a very young age, where he began to train her in the Force, although officially she was one of the Imperial Palace's dancers. Years later, Jade remembered little about her early life besides her parents' reluctance to let her go and her own certainty that she was going to leave with the Emperor. She did recall at one point that she had had a falling star globe as a child and had gotten in trouble after breaking it to see how it worked. 
Her master trained her in the ways of the Force, and she was made into an agent of the Empire. Some of the Imperial Court assumed her to simply be a dancer, or one of Palpatine's concubines. Throughout Jade's youth, she was pushed through an intensive training regimen, which involved training alongside the Imperial Royal Guard and learning covert espionage and assassination skills, at which she was adept by the age of 14, and became an Emperor's Emperor, one of Palpatine's personal assassins, after a final test in which she successfully broke into Grand Moff Wilhuff Tarkin's private quarters. In order to accomplish her mission, Jade, posing as a guest at a formal event at Tarkin's residence, feigned illness in order to get away from the other guests. She then retrieved a sack of equipment and descended down the side of the building to the room containing Tarkin's private safe. While she was breaking in, a group of guards came in, actually droids, and she engaged them with her blaster and lightsaber. However, upon sensing that one of the guards was living, she knocked him out rather than kill a soldier willing to give his life in a training exercise. Vader and Sidious were pleased with her skills, and she was pronounced the Emperor's Hand. Despite there being several Emperor's Hands, she, like the others, was unaware of the existence of any other hands. Due to her deep connection with the Force, she could hear Palpatine's voice anywhere in the galaxy via a telepathic link. Jade carried out Palpatine's will on numerous worlds, eliminating corrupt Imperial officials, traitors, and others who he deemed deserving of death or judgment. His esteem for her was such that he actually allowed her time for relaxation, atypical of Palpatine's usual style. In addition to a personal starship and a protocol droid named K-3 to aid her in her duties as Hand, she also received a private quarters on Coruscant, where she kept her lightsaber and a Lanvarok for left-handers, although Jade herself was right-handed, among the items in her personal weapon collection. Before the Battle of Yavin, the destruction of an Imperial superweapon called the DS-1 Orbital Battle Station, she was tasked with gathering intelligence in order to help hunt down any Jedi she found that had survived Order 66. One such Jedi was Anya Kuro. Jade had come across a man trying to escape Imperial custody on Quat, and he yielded information to her obtained from a Sakorian smuggler. The smuggler told her that Kuro was on the fifth planet of the Kofrigan system. Jade lobbied the Emperor unsuccessfully to be allowed to be the one to end Kuro, but instead Vader was sent. During the years following the Battle of Yavin and preceding the Battle of Hoth, Jade spied on Darth Vader and delivered reports on his actions to the Emperor, even going so far as watching, from afar, his assault on the Masasi Temples, some six months after the loss of the Death Star over Yavin Prime, which resulted in the capture of Rebel Commander Yan Dodonna. In later missions where she was assigned to discreetly observe him, Jade soon became envious of Vader and sensed a division in him, specifically because she didn't understand the basis of his obsession concerning a young Jedi named Luke Skywalker. Jade began to hope that Vader would betray the Emperor so that she could kill him and take his place as the Emperor's apprentice. Despite these spy activities, she still performed tasks for Vader himself. Around 1.5 ABY, Jade was responsible for uncovering information about Rebel Alliance droids, C-3PO and R2-D2, for Vader, though Vader was either unwilling or unable to collect the information from her himself. Instead, he sent a spacer who had been doing work for the Empire to pick up the information from Jade on Naboo, before returning it to him for a reward of 100 credits. Later that year, she participated in the celebration of Empire Day on Naboo. During the festivities, she tasked a group of Imperial operatives to rescue six Imperial officers from a prison facility inside the hidden rebel base on the planet Corellia. The Imperial agents did so successfully, and were awarded the Imperial Badge of Meritorious Service for this accomplishment. Around the time of the Battle of Hoth, she visited Belsavis. Jade had also investigated Moff Glovestone, posing as Countess Claria, and discovered that he had been skimming the top-off tax returns to the Imperial Center. Faking intoxication, she retired to a private room during a formal party Glovestoke was throwing, only to leave an inflatable dummy behind and, having exchanged her formal wear for a combat suit, quickly infiltrated his office and found six stolen paintings worth millions of credits in his palace. Jade returned to Imperial Center and reported her findings to Palpatine, but also saved General Dirian, whom she believed to be honest, from the fallout of Glovestoke's destruction.
Upon Glovestoke's arrest, Jade also took the job of discovering who had delivered the paintings, as well as those who had aided the mob. First, she went to the auction house where the paintings had been sold, but gleaned little information. Next, she investigated secure storage sites and found a good match in the Bertraub Brothers' storage and reclamation center, within which she sensed criminal connections. Observing the facility from a nearby tap cafe, the owners of the storage facility attempted to drug her, but her force senses alerted her to the attempt. She confronted the owner, Pertona, who attempted to kill her. She easily subdued him and he admitted the involvement of a pirate group identified as the Blood Scars, a ruthless gang that wanted to combine several gangs to dominate the Shelter Center. Jade stowed away on one of the pirate ships that she had been pointed to, choosing a HT-2200 medium freighter that was being sent to attack a transport carrying Imperial military equipment. About the time the craft launched an attack on the Happer's Way, Jade was also discovered and attacked by a group of pirates. Undaunted, she quickly took over the ship, captured Tannis, and signaled the reprisal via the Happer's Way's communications relay to assist her and the freighter. Boarding the reprisal, Jade was coldly greeted by Captain Kendall Ozzel, who believed she was onto him for five stormtroopers that had deserted earlier after killing Major Drelfin over Derek Larone's refusal to kill civilians on Teardrop. Jade requested a pair of crewers for the ship, and Colonel Vox Somero gave her a pair of ISB men to accompany her. Taking the two ISB men and Tannis with her on the Happer's Way, she went to infiltrate the pirate base at Geverine, pretending to be an independent ship thief who wanted to join the Blood Scars. Jade arrived on Geperin and was brought to meet the Commodore, who was suspicious of her. That evening, Jade was attacked by the two ISB men, who had been ordered to eliminate her, and their attack attracted the pirates' attention. She attempted to deal with the Commodore, who ignored her and had his pirate accomplice called right in. His attempt was unsuccessful, but she was interrupted before she could stop him and the Commodore. Aboard the reprisal, Ozil and Somaril, wanting to be sure she was slain, arrived over Geperin and launched TIE fighters and an orbital bombardment to kill Mara and the pirates. Jade quickly raced to the command center and found the Commodore's body next to a holonet message he was about to send to Shel Kanwa. She shot down the TIE fighters, and the reprisal left in pursuit of the Millennium Falcon and their rogue stormtroopers who had appeared in system, allowing her to escape in a Z-10 seeker. Journeying to Shelkanwa, she found Vader and the Executor already there in search of rebel leader Leia Organa. Jade believed that Governor Barshness Chord was a traitor, and informed Vader of her findings. The Dark Lord of the Sith brooked no interference in his search, but he did allow Jade to investigate and deal with Chor. Upon landing, Caldra attacked her with a purloined all-terrain scout transport, but she was aided by the group of rogue stormtroopers, dubbed the Hand of Judgment and led by Darek Larone. Taking them under her command, she defeated the ATST, unknowingly with the help of Chewbacca in a freighter. But Caldra had escaped. With her newly drafted stormtroopers, she advanced on the governor's palace, where once again Caldra tried to kill her. She put an end to him when he tried to shoot her, and she redirected the bolt into him with her lightsaber. In the meantime, the Hand of Judgment had penetrated the Governor's security. Linking back up with the Hand of Judgment, Jade arrested Governor Chord and vouched for the rogue stormtroopers, even in front of Vader. Later, she learned their true story. She let them go, but warned them to lie low and lose their Hand of Judgment name, saying she was the only Hand in the Empire. Subsequently, Jade was tasked with eliminating a corrupt judge, Lamos Chatur. Upon confronting the official, she was ambushed by a pair of armed guards, but handily defeated both. Ignoring Chatur's excuses and pleas, she executed him in the name of Imperial Justice. Following her successful mission, she was contacted mentally by Palpatine after she returned to her private Lambda-class shuttle. Palpatine had another assignment for her, sending her to investigate allegations of treason against Governor Bidor Farouz of the Kandora Sector. Farouz had been reported to be collaborating with the Rebel Alliance, and Palpatine tasked her with ascertaining the veracity of the accusations and executing Farouz if they were substantiated. To reach the sector capital of Tone Major, Jade decided she would need a different, less conspicuous ship than her own shuttle. 
She also decided that having willing stormtrooper accomplices would be useful. Having monitored the continued altruistic vigilantism of the Hand of Judgment, despite her earlier warning to them, Jade decided to use them again. Jade tracked them to Elagasso based on her knowledge of their activities and her own intuition, and soon found them on a nearby world where a corrupt local official named Bok Yost had captured them before they could interfere with the election he had raised to secure his position. Jade burst into the holding area, killing the mercenaries hired by Yost. Confronted with imminent death, Yost had no choice but to surrender his prisoners and resign his position in favor of holding new, fair elections for Jade released Larone and his men and then recruited them to assist her infiltration of Palm Major. Knowing full well the leverage she had over them, Larone agreed to her terms reluctantly. Using the Hand of Judgment's modified Suwantek TL-1800, Jade and the Hand of Judgment flew to Poln Major. Upon arrival, Jade tasked them with surveying the Stormtrooper security at the spaceport and obtaining ship logs while she sought to stake out security at the governor's house. Her initial observations showed it was heavily fortified from all angles. To test security at the gate, she used the force to manipulate the steering controls on a passing land speeder, causing it to nearly crash into the gate. The response by the gates told her it would be possible to arrange a similar, more severe accident to have herself detained and brought into the palace, where she planned to escape. To aid in her plan, she purchased a remote-controlled toy airspeeder and modified it. Having obtained the report from the Hand of Judgment on spaceport security and ship logs, Jade learned that a fair number of suspected Rebel Alliance ships were in Sithia, which she considered corroboration of the accusations against Farouz. She ordered the Hand of Judgment to meet her at the palace gates after helping them steal some stormtrooper armor with identification markings that would allow them to get close to the palace and have them assist in her entry. Having stolen a civilian landspeeder, Jade again faked a crash into the palace gates with the airspeeder toy in the vehicle as well. She was held up at the gate by suspicious guards when Hand of Judgment stormtroopers Larone and Sabrin Marcross arrived, accusing her of shoplifting from an electronics store. That charge, combined with a ruse where Jade faked that the airspeeder toy was rigged to sabotage speeder controls, earned her a trip to the detention area, precisely what she wanted. Jade quickly escaped while being taken for interrogation and met up with Larone after knocking out her captors. Jade then carved a hole into the ceiling and escaped into an abandoned wing of the palace, seeking a way to approach Farouz. Having confirmed her suspicions of his treason, she managed to sneak into his office following a Rebel Alliance ambassador named Vestin Axel. Farouz confessed his treason, but informed Jade that he'd only done so on instructions from the people who had kidnapped his wife and young daughter under the instructions of a powerful local warlord, Nuso Esvay. Feeling some sympathy for the man, Jade forestalled his execution to help retrieve his family and deal with SVA first. Before she could learn too much more, the governor's office was attacked by infiltrators in the employ of ESVA, while his other henchmen stirred up a riot at the gate to distract the guards. Jade held them off as best as she could, finally dealing with the attackers when Larone and Marcroft ambushed them from behind. Jade then pulled Axlon and Farouz into the governor's private exit, along with Larone and Marcross, escaping the palace through the exit and straight trail. Calling in the rest of the Hand of Judgment, they secured a tap cafe as a hideout until Jade could rescue Farouz's family. Jade revealed that the governor had been under duress to Axlon, who had been hoping to broken an alliance between the Rebellion and the Kandora sector. She also told Axlon that in exchange for a truce while they fought off Esva's forces, she would give the rebel forces in the Poln system two days to leave. Based on information given to her by Farouz, Jade then deduced that a security officer named Pakri, one of her captors from earlier, was in the employ of ESVA. She also learned that ESVA had a significant space force, armed partially with weapons stolen from the Empire by Pakri. Jade then returned to the palace to find Pakri. While she was gone, Larone and the Hand of Judgment were attacked by Axlan, who had also been courting Esva's favor and hoped that arranging the governor's death would ingratiate the warlord to the rebellion. The Hand of Judgment eliminated Axlan and informed her of his treason. Jade suspected that the kidnappers had used the safe room built into the governor's private exit and investigated it.
She had one of the governor's security officers bait Packery into the safe room by claiming the governor was there. She kidnapped him, but was attacked by eight alien assassins before she could extract information from him. Jade slew them all, but Packery escaped in the confusion. However, Lerone had a contact who provided her with intelligence of the location where the family was held. Jade located a secret passageway that led there and followed it to an underground area that was heavily guarded. Having learned this, Baruz then called Packery and informed the duplicitous officer of his location to draw off some of the guards. The ruse was successful, giving Jade an opening. Noting the passageway was mined with explosives, Jade used an alien corpse to set off the explosives as a distraction while she worked her way along an overhead crane arm. Meanwhile, Larone's contact, actually rebel pilot Luke Skywalker, made his own attempt to free the governor's family. He came under fire after subduing some of the guards with his lightsaber, and Jade tossed him her weapon. She then drew fire, deflecting it with her lightsaber as she closed on the cabin where the governor's family was being held. Skywalker helped fight off the guards while Jade freed Feruza's wife and daughter. As Ezva's forces closed in, Jade ordered Skywalker to shoot a pool of flammable liquid she had spilled to cover their escape. The resulting explosion and Jade's skills dealt with the rest of the guards. Meanwhile, the Hand of Judgment fended off Ezva's forces, and an Imperial fleet destroyed the Warlord's Eastern fleet. Jade then allowed Feruz to live after returning his family, considering that his treason had been imposed under extenuating circumstances. Skywalker and the Rebel Alliance managed to escape, though the Empire had arranged that they would obtain supplies that would lead them to choose a remote, cold location for their next base. Jade later searched for the Hand of Judgment to see what had happened to them, but they had disappeared, and she was unable to find them. A few months prior to the Battle of Endor, Jade was in Palpatine's chamber when Darth Vader brought the Force-sensitive cyborg Lumia to Palpatine to serve as another Emperor's Hand. Jade was dismissed from Palpatine's presence before he accepted Lumia's service, maintaining her illusion that she was the only Hand, but Jade nevertheless sensed immediate hostility from Lumia. Following the Battle of Hoth, Jade became aware of Palpatine's worries about Luke Skywalker. She was sent to infiltrate Jabba Desilijic Tior's palace on Tatooine, disguised as the dancing girl Arika, in order to await Skywalker. While waiting for Luke Skywalker, Jade witnessed C-3PO and R2-D2's arrival at the palace. Later, after the droids was forced into the hut's service, C-3PO met Jade. After a brief conversation, in which she questioned 3PO regarding Skywalker and introduced herself as Arika, Jade disappeared as C-3PO witnessed the dancing girl Ula's execution. However, Melina Carney, a member of Jabba's secret security detail, suspected her of being out to assassinate the Hutt and attempted to arrest her. Jade turned the tables on Karnas, however, taking her into custody and then using the Force to cause Melina to shoot one of Jabba's Gamorrean guards. Jade fled down a tunnel and came to a ventilation shaft of the Rancor Pit. After fighting through three rows of guards, she was able to watch Skywalker kill the Rancor. She then entered the ventilation shaft of the Rancor Pit using a vibro axe and used the Force to open the trap door and follow the crowd out to the sail barge. Though she begged Jabba to let her join him and others at the Dune Sea, a suspicious Jabba instead provided her with a land speeder and told her to leave and never come back after she tried to use the force on him. Thus stymied in the attempt to fulfill her mission, she made her way back to Imperial Center and a displeased Palpatine. Years later, a force vision revealed to Skywalker that, had she been present at the Great Pit of Carcoon, Jade would have succeeded in preventing his escape. Following her mission on Tatooine, Jade was given another task by the Emperor, to kill Dekuk, a Geodu who sought to revive Black Sun by incorporating its remnants into his own empire, that of the Black Nebula. Jade arrived on the planet Svizrang, where she began laying the groundwork for her new mission. She reconnoitered the Crime Lord's base, but realized that she would need a distraction to allow her to sneak in unnoticed. She went to the local Imperial Garrison Commander, General Suno, and requested two squads of stormtroopers and an officer. The officer assigned to her was Captain Strock, and together he and Jade planned a raid on the building next to Dekis, but Strock was unaware that the raid was a distraction planned by Jade. The following day, however, saw the raid utterly fail, and the majority of the Imperials killed. 
Jade, though, was still able to use the distraction provided by the firefight to sneak in and assassinate a Geodu she believed to be DQ. After the assassination, Jade reported to the Emperor that the mission had been successful. Palpatine, as a reward for her efficiency, provided her with a vacation. She did her best to enjoy the time that was provided to her, but she found herself mulling over the events which had transpired on Svivren. She came to the conclusion that the assassination was too easy, and that any number of the guards present during her attack could have easily been able to stop her. Jade decided to test her theory by setting up a simulation of the assassination. Only two out of five times was she able to successfully kill Dequa and withdraw unharmed. She concluded that the person she killed was not the real Dequa, but a cleverly placed decoy. Jade resolved that it was still her duty to hunt down and assassinate the real leader of Black Nebula. Jade used her force link with Palpatine to advise him of her findings, but before she could, he allowed her to witness his destruction by both Vader and Luke Skywalker. His last command reverberated through the Force to her. You will kill Luke Skywalker. She was overcome by his death agonies and rendered unconscious. She remained in a dreamlike state for several days, until she was apprehended by two of Director of Imperial Intelligence Ivan Isard's henchmen. They took Jade to Isard, who imprisoned her and used intelligence tactics to try and force Jade to aid her in her bid for power. Jade, though, was able to escape from captivity and find passage to the backwater world of Forlis. Jade intended to lay low for the time being until she could raise enough funds to relocate. To better blend into her temporary surroundings, she found work as a waitress at a local cantina owned by Gorb Drig. For several weeks, she worked for Drig under the alias Kiara Lorn, until members of Black Nebula arrived to collect a debt owed by Drig. Jade could not believe her luck in discovering that Black Nebula had a presence on Forlis. Not wanting Drig to be harmed, Jade did her best to fight the more numerous gang members. She managed to obtain her lightsaber and quickly kill the remaining Nebula members, though not before they killed Drig and Jorshman, a patron whom Jade had befriended.